so today I will be talking about manual radar plotting. So before everything else, I would like to talk about the objectives of our presentation for today. And first is identify the basic terminologies of manual radar plotting. And second is learn to execute manual radar plotting. Third is determine the course to alter to prevent collision. So of course we need to do that. And lastly, determine the change of speed to prevent collision. So before everything else, what is manual radar plotting? So when we speak about manual radar plotting from the word itself manual, we will be doing it by hand. So manual radar plotting is about getting information that ARPA provides by calculating the data manually. So instead of using the ARPA, we'll be calculating it manually. So we will be the one to acquire it using the data that can be found. Okay, so why is it important? Because as we all know, there are always circumstances on board where we cannot use ARPA or, or radar. So we should learn how to do this manually because, you know, we need the information to navigate. So I will talk about terminologies used in manual radar plotting. So first is the vector triangle. So in the vector triangle, there are actually three sides of it. So that's what you can see in the screen. So first is the side E to R. So E to R represent the true course and speed of the vessel. And next is side E to M, which represent the true course and the speed of other vessels. So from the vessel yourself and the other vessel. And lastly, side R to M, which represents the relative motion vector and also the directions and speed of other vessels apparent movement so that is the last side of the vector triangle and aside from that we also have the other terminologies and the first one is CPA or the closest point of approach so when we speak about closest point of approach from the word itself the shortest distance from relative motion line to the center of the plotting sheet okay it's very obvious and if the CPA is zero the own ship is in collision course with the other ship so if it's zero that means the line in the other ship's line actually meets so it will be dangerous and aside from that we also have the RML or relative motion line and RML the new relative motion line and SRM speed of relative motion line DRM the direction of relative motion or the direction of R to M and lastly the M with a subscript of X so the position of the other ship on the RML at the planned time of evasive action point of execution so that is the M X <laughs> okay so aside from that we will also talk about the six minute rule so when doing manual manual radio plotting we should always consider this rule so time distance and speed relations are easy to use by the six minute rules for problems so it should be speed is in knots knots are measured per hour so that's what we should always consider for example if vessel travels 18.2 knots then she will travel one tenth of that speed which is 1.82 nautical miles in six minutes okay so that's the six minute rule so if another one if a vessel travels 1.2 nautical mile in six minutes then the distance is multiplied by 10 which is 12 knots so i guess that's it so good day everyone this is tagud levin and in my discussion we will be doing how to do man manual radar plotting so in the past discussion so we have already discussed what is uh, manual radar plotting why do we do manual radar plotting and uh, and also discuss about the terminologies used in plotting so before we start so the items that we will be using in manual radar plotting includes the maneuvering board or the radar plotting sheet writing items or, and erasers and also uh, a sliding ruler or a parallel ruler or or two tri triangle rulers and lastly is the compass so before we 
commence the plotting, so we must first find the needed information to plot. So in our example, so it is uh, determined that our ship is traveling at uh, 0 degrees through with a speed of 20 knots. So in the first sighting of the other vessel, so the, the vessel is first located at 45 degrees through having a distance of 9 nautical miles from our vessel. So after 6 minutes, so the vessel has a bearing of 50 degrees through with the distance of 7 nautical miles from our ship. So what we must find in this uh, information that we gather? So we need to find the DRM or the direction of the relative motion, the SRM, speed of relative motion, the BCPA or the bearing of the closest point of approach, the RCPA or the range of closest point of approach, the TCPA or the time of the closest point of approach, and lastly is the targets, true course, and speed. So first of all, uh, we must plot the first sighting of the vessel which is uh, located 45 degrees through with a range of 9 nautical miles. So here in the plotting sheet, so in order to uh, measure the distance, so we use the dista distance scale of 12 nautical miles. So next one, similar to the R0 or plotting the R0 is we need also to plot the information of the M6 or the sightings of the other vessel after 6 minutes. So which is uh, 50 degrees through with a distance of 7 nautical miles. So similar to the R0, so we also use the distance scale of 12 nautical miles. So after plotting the R0 and the M6, so we have our uh, R to M vector. So we connect the R0 and the M6 and we are now making a relative motion line in which if we uh, transfer the line into the, the center of the uh, plotting sheet, so the DRM is 209 degrees through. So after finding the DRM, so we need also to find the SRM which is the distance between the R to M. So by, by using the distance scale of 12 nautical miles, so we measured that the distance between R to M is 2.1 nautical miles multiplied by 10 so we get the SRM of 21 knots. So after finding the speed of relative motion, so next is we find the bearing of the closest point of approach or the BCPA which is the direction in which the relative motion line is located. So we plot it. So in our plotting sheet, we find that the BCPA is 119 degrees true. After finding the BCPA is that we need to also find the range of the closest point of approach. So we just measure the distance between our own ship towards the, the RML line uh, and the direction of the bear of the bearing of the closest point of approach. So using the distance scale of 12 nautical miles, we find that the uh, range of closest point of approach is 2.7 nautical miles. So after finding the RCPA, so we need to find the time of the closest point of approach or the time in which the ship will be at its closest distance to the ship. So here we have the the uh, formula of the CPA which is the distance between the R to the point of CPA or the point of closest point of approach. So using the distance scale of 12 nautical miles, so we measured uh, the R the distance between R and the point of CPA to be 8.7 nautical miles, which is which will be divided by the SRM, which is we found a while ago, 21 knots multiplied by 60 and we get the time of closest point of approach which is in 25 minutes. So after finding the TCPA, so we need to find the location of the E since uh, it is used to determine the target's uh, course and speed. So first of all is we need to uh, plot uh, the course of our own ship and move it towards the R. So after moving our own ship's course into the R is we need to find the distance in 6 minutes in which we will be using our own ship's speed 
which is 20 knots divided by 10, in which we get the distance of 2 nautical miles. So 2 nautical miles will then be uh, plotted from the R towards the end of the 2 nautical miles in which we find the E. So after uh, locating the E, so we connect the E to M in which we get the EM line. So from the EM line, so in order to determine the target scores is we uh, move the EM line towards the center and then we find that the target scores is 275 degrees true. So another thing is also finding the target speed. So how do we do it? So in finding the target speed, so we just need to measure the distance between the E to M. So in, in our plotting sheet, so the distance between E to M is 1.6 nautical miles and which is multiplied to by 10 and we get the target's speed which is 16 knots. So that is what you need to do in manual radar plotting. So what if our vessel and the our vessel is proceeding in a collision course, in which the collision course means that our BCPA is non-existing and our RCPA is at zero nautical miles. So how to find the course and speed to alter to avoid collision? So similar as what we did a while ago on manual radar plotting, so we need to find the information to plot which is, which is our own ship's course which is on 0 degrees through and a speed of 20 knots. So the first sighting of the other vessel is at a bearing of 45 degrees through with a distance of 10 nautical miles. So after 6 minutes, the vessel is sighted still at 45 degrees through with a decreasing distance of 8 nautical miles. So through uh, plotting, so we found out that the DRM is 225 degrees through SRM of 20 knots. Since this is a collision course, so the BCPA is not applicable and the RCPA is 0 nautical miles and the TCPA is at 30 minutes. So through plotting, we also found out that the target scores and speed is 290 degrees through and 20 knots. So here is the catch. Our ship plans to maneuver with the contact is at uh, 4 nautical miles range and maneuver for a CPA of 2 nautical miles on our port side. So after uh, doing the manual radar plotting of the given information and also finding other informations related to uh, the target, so we got additional information which is uh, what range our vessel needs to alter its course so here is the mx so in our mx so we just measure from our own ship through the distance scale four nautical miles and then place it on our uh, relative motion line which is we got here in the plotting sheet an mx at four nautical miles so after finding the mx since uh, it is also on the given that we need at a CPA of 2 nautical miles so we need to make sure that we need to maneuver at port side so through that so we connect the MX to our 2 nautical miles range from our ship which is in our plotting sheet we connect them and we got the new relative motion line so after uh, plotting the new relative motion line so all we need to do is to transfer it into the M. So after transferring the new relative motion line, so we need to find the R1. Since uh, upon finding the R1, we, we can all also find the course that we need to alter. So in finding the R1, so we just need to use the compass in which we use the E to R as basis in which we make an arc connecting into the new RML. So after finding the R1, so in order to know our new course or the course to alter, so we just need to connect E to R1. So after connecting E to R1, 
So we transfer it into our own ship or the center of the plotting sheet and then we get the new course to alter which is 35 degrees through in order to avoid collision. So what if our vessel cannot alter course in order to avoid collision? So what we need to do is to reduce the speed of the, vis of the vessel instead. So how do we do that? How to find the new speed to change? So unlike in finding the new course to alter, so the R1 is located between the intersection of the new relative motion line and the E to R line. So upon finding the R1, so we need to measure the E to R1 with our distance scale. So in our plotting sheet right here, so we get a distance of 1 nautical miles which is multiplied to 10 and we get the new speed which is 10 knots. So in other words, if the other vessel reaches a range of 4 nautical miles, so instead of altering our course, so we can reduce our speed from 20 knots to 10 knots per hour. So from that, this ends our discussion about manual radar plotting and thanks for listening.